episode of Let There Be Talk number 538. Today is brought to you by my fantastic CBD sponsor, CBD Lion. They've got it all. Bath bombs, CBD combo pack, CBD patch. Yeah, those patches you can stick right on your sore spot, your shoulder, your ankle, your knee, wherever, your wrist. They've got tinctures, tropical gummies. Gummies. You know you need some gummies. CBD pet tinctures. Your dog acting all cuckoo, barking all the time at stuff. Maybe he's still fucking going crazy from the fireworks. Give him some tincture under the old tongue. Disposable vape pens. Disposable vape cartridges, shatter, CBD isolate, everything. CBD line is your CBD one-stop shop. 100% pure CBD, none of this truck stop garbage. This is the bomb stuff. CBDLion.com. Use the code DEAN for 20% off. I've been using the uh, 1,000 milligram roll-on on my neck for about four months now, and it is 100% uh, working. I, I can't even tell you. This is how I know it works. Because if I don't use it, I'm like, oh, my neck's sore. Oh, I haven't been using the CBD. CBD Lion. A lot of you guys out there are probably musicians. CBDLion.com. Use the code DEAN for 20% off. Like I said, I recommend, first of all, I like the 5,000 milligram sleeper. I call it the sleeper hold tincture. I get some drops of that and lay down and see you later. It's a see you later. All right, CBDLion.com, the king sponsor of Let There Be Talk. Oh, man, great people. How are you guys? Here we are. It's Monday. It is July 13th. It's been a cooker here in L.A. all weekend. Don't mind it, though. Don't mind. Uh... Perfect proof that the heat does not disintegrate COVID. Throw that one out the window. But a great guest today. You know how I did the Thrash January? And then later on had Gary Holtz on from Exodus. And then Gary said, you should get Rob Dukes on, who sang with Exodus for 10 years. You should have him on because he's way into restoring Volkswagen uh, old vintage Bugs and buses and squarebacks and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, this would be great. Rob is a fantastic guest. We, we, uh, we talked about cars, motorcycles, living in Arizona, uh, comedy, all over the board. All over the board. It was a uh, perfect let there be talk conversation. It, we, we, we did it all. Even tattooing, talked about tattooing. All kinds of stuff. Rob, great guy. Never saw him play in Exodus. And uh, didn't really listen to that era until recently just to dig into it. It was one of those things where, like he said, um, I'm a bailoff guy. So is he. And he had to fill some pretty big shoes. And it was great to hear about how he approached that. Fantastic guest. Thank you for doing the show, buddy. And a huge comedy fan, which is cool. Big comedy fan. I was watching a clip of him on YouTube singing in front of a zillion people. And he's wearing a Doug Stanhope shirt. Pretty fucking cool. You don't see that every day. A metal guy wearing a comedy shirt. So, uh, right on. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. I just want to say that uh, I've been doing these Zoom fests with my Patreoners. And it's, it's been so much fun. Every weekend, I just fire up the Zoom for the uh, Patreoners, and we get on there, and we shoot the shit about music, uh, everything, actually. We, tonight, we talked a little bit about uh, politics, which is very rare for the Dell Razors. But uh, once in a while, you got uh, to talk about some real shit. Anyway... Join patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. You can be part of the Zoom Fest. You can get the bonus episodes of Let There Be Talk. We're up to 83 or 4 now, 84 or something like that. 
So you get all the bonus episodes. You get the Zoom. And uh, I put up some other content up there, too. Cool photos and, and stuff like that. I, I, I'm enjoying the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. And uh, that's the best place to get the podcast these days. I did take it off Stitcher. And I did take it off um, Spotify. So if that's where you listened before, sorry. But uh, it is no longer on those platforms. Uh, but you can't get it on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, Patreon.com, Libsyn, and All Things Comedy. So there's plenty of places to get the podcast. And uh, thank you for listening every week like you do. I'm going to get into a uh, little shout outs here of the new Patreoners, Nate Leffingwell. Thank you, my friend. The Hudsons. Very cool. China Ryder upped his pledge. So very, very cool there also. I appreciate all you guys, and I hope you enjoy this episode. I really did like talking to Rob. It was fun. And uh, a lot of great guests coming up here. A lot of good stuff coming, coming down the pipe, as they say. Here he is right now. Keep the candles lit. Welcome on the board, Mr. Rob Dukes. All right. Here we are. Another episode of Let There Be Talk. Great guest today. Kind of a uh, continuation of the thrash metal January, thrash January. And uh, it is my man, Rob Dukes. How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. How are you, bud? I'm How good. I, I've never met you, and uh, nope. I've, I've never seen you sing live. Um, but as I was talking to Gary, Gary Holt of Exodus, which you did a few records with, he said, oh, you got to have Rob on, man. He fucking works on old Volkswagen air-cooled <laughs> engines. And I was yep. like, oh, what? Yeah, there we go. So we could talk thrash metal. We can talk uh, restoring Volkswagens. We could talk motorcycles. We could talk living in Arizona, all that shit. So how are you? Yeah, man. I'm good, man. I'm good. It's uh, it's 117 here today, so I'm not. I'm going from here to the pool and back home. That's all I'm doing today. Uh, oh, you got a pool? Uh, I have a. I live in like a, like a community, so there's a community pool. So um, you can't really go in it, but I've been going in anyway. Just going there because nobody's in there. So I'm like, ah, well, nobody's yeah. gonna use it. I'm gonna. <laughs> now what? Um, what part of Arizona are you in? I live in Chandler, which is about uh, I know. 30 minutes from, from uh, Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I like Chandler and Gilbert. Those are good areas. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, yeah, I live, right, I live right on the border, actually. I live right, right. Gilbert's like a minute away. Now, so. do, do you rent or own? I rent here. I, um, uh, I've been renting for about five years at this house. And what is know? the rent? I'm just curious. My rent is fourteen hundred, and that includes all the lawn shit. Wow! So I don't have to do. I don't have to, do, I don't have to mow my lawn or anything. They take care of it. Like everybody do it every Wednesday. They come. So I got a two car garage and a three bedroom, and uh, and it's quiet. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, so. You're like you're like me, man. I just clicked the box. Quiet. There's something <laughs> about being in an in a insane environments for your work be it the engine sounds or yeah. or martial amps or yeah. with, with me <laughs> uh you know constant uh talking to people after shows and all that stuff that when yeah. you go home you just, just want to quiet yeah you don't want to hear a neighbor or nothing no man no um what's funny too is i live so uh there's a um I, I live like in a, there's a, it, Phoenix is weird. You can, you, there can be really nice neighborhoods right up against like kind of sketchy neighborhoods, but I live actually in a, in a working class uh, neighborhood and they have, there's this one house about three houses away on, on, on the other street and he has parties like once a month and he always has a live band and it's always like a, a like a Mercado band. So it's Spanish music and it's just doom, 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 doom for fucking hours, man, until like two in the morning. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So once a month, man. So yeah. So now you've, you've 
lived all over the place. You lived on the yeah. East Coast, then you lived in L.A. And did you spend some yeah. time in the Bay when you were in Exodus? Yeah, man. So I grew up in New York. Um, then I moved to L.A. for a couple of years. And, uh, and then I moved when I joined Exodus. I, uh, I still lived in L.A. for the first like year. Um, and I would travel back and forth, but I eventually, uh, I spent, you know, when I went to, to there, I would, uh, I usually crash with, uh, Jack or Lee. Um, and, uh, they both lived one, li Jack lived in Martinez and Lee lived in, uh, in Walnut Creek or Pleasant Hill. So, um, <clears throat> my buddy Sip who owned, uh, he owns the Q bar in, in the Castro. He used to own the pound. Oh, yeah. He's one of the owners of the pound. So me and Sip, I, I started hanging out with him a lot. And like, so he lived downtown. So I spent most of my time like just hanging out like in, in San Francisco and, uh, and just, you know, but I'd go there for rehearsals. I'd be there for like a month and then, um, and then I'd go back to New York or I'd go back to LA. I actually moved when I joined uh, Exodus. I, after a year, um, I moved back to New York. So I was, I would only fly in for rehearsals and then um, usually if we were like to say we were, our first show was in Frankfurt, I would just meet them there because I would fly from New York if, unless I did rehearsals and then I'd fly with them. But after like you would do like six week runs or eight week runs and then we would do take like two weeks off and then go do another tour. I wouldn't go rehearse. There would be no need because I would right, be of course, rehearsed. Of course. So I'd just, meet, I'd just meet them guys in, you know, wherever the fuck we were playing. That's a pretty pretty interesting story, man. You're you're out living in New York. You ride your motorcycle across the country. Well, what yep. bike did you ride across country? Uh, GSXR 750. Whoa, a, a crotch rocket. <laughs> that's all I ever rode. I mean, that's all I ride. That's uh, right. So I I uh, I used to have a Yamaha V Max. That was my first real kind of V twin bike, and then I I went from that to an RC 51, and um, I had that for almost, you know, I had it, I was a 2004, I bought it brand new from the dealer. And, um, yeah, I had that for like 10 years, man. And then it, uh, electronically it shit out and then I sold it. Um, and I bought the, uh, right now I have the Yamaha FJR 1300. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's a great it's a fast bike. bike. Yeah. Fast bike. Comfortable as fuck. I rode it from here to, uh, Yellowstone and back in like five days. Wow. Um, yeah, man. So wow. yeah. my, my next, my next trip is Pike's peak. That's, that's my next. Uh, oh, I went it. there. I've been yeah. twice. It's so great. Yeah. I, I'd go on the way to Sturgis, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, just get way up there to cool off. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, um, it's, what is it like, uh, 13,000 feet or something. Oh, it's fucking something crazy, man. It's something yeah. crazy. Um, I actually, so I've done it in the United States. I've done it eight times. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've been across eight times. So I, uh, and I went a different route every time I've been to all four corners of the United States on a, on a bike. We started in New York, did the blue Ridge parkway all the way down to Key West, went scuba diving, came back up through the West coast of Florida to like through like, New Orleans and Austin all the way into like New Mexico, then up to Boulder and then through all the national parks down to Tijuana then all the way up the coast, all the way to Vancouver and then all the way back. And actually Sturgis was actually going on when we were coming through like the Badlands. We went to the Badlands and then we were coming across and one morning. So me and my buddy were both on cross rockets, uh, you know, big V twin, uh, MotoGP bikes, and we have full leather race suits. That's how we traveled. We had little tank bags with like socks and underwear and toothpaste and shit, and no backpacks. No backpack. Awesome. No, no backpacks. I love no that. No backpacks. Yeah, because it weighs on you. It was like fuck this, man. It's brutal. Yeah. So uh, we just had tank bags and and, and uh, you know socks, underwear, flip flops, and swim trunks, and uh, and I brought books because we would get to the hotels and. Uh, we saved money for like a year and a half. We planned it out for almost two years before we did this epic trip. It was 15,652 miles in six weeks and two days. That's like Rocky and from uh, from Mask. Remember? <laughs> the, the <laughs> no. Plot? no. You ever see that movie Mask with Cher? And yeah. I, I don't remember it, but yeah, I did oh. see it, but I don't remember. Well, he's got the map of the United States on his wall. Oh, oh, oh yeah. To oh, go to all of it. Or maybe it's Europe or something, but each day he's putting a pin in, like, we're going to go here next. And, <laughs> and I always thought that that was, like, so cool, man. These guys yeah. were plotting out their trip, like their Easy Rider trip. I mean, yeah. there, there's something 
that gets in your soul. With me, it was Easy Rider. Um, yeah. You have a buddy, and it's the two of you, and you ride around America. And, and I've done it many, many times like you. And you cannot even believe what goes through the memories that you get from that, man. Actually, it, what was really awesome about it was there was it was all um, pre. It, we had cell phones, but they were for like emergency only. They were flip phones back then, so everything was by map, and we had like mapped out. So we didn't take any freeways. Like we we rarely took freeways. We had to sometimes because it was the only way to get from one spot to another. But uh, we went through every weather weather pattern there was. You know, like we went through hail, rain, snow, fucking cold as fuck, hot as fuck. Um, we went through the Mojave desert. It was 120, And, uh, but at, uh, at some points, man, I mean, it, like, I can't explain like what it was like to, y- you would just have to do it. I can't explain. And not only that, it's the, it's the mental part of it. It's that mental clearing. Cause you're in your, by yourself, you got you, the wind and your motor. And that's all you hear. I don't, I've never ridden with earplugs in or any of that. So I always just, it's just me, the motor and the bike. And, and I've logged, you know, Dude, I'm part of the Iron Buck Club. I did a, I did 1,100 miles in one day, so over a thousand miles in one day. And um, you know, there's it's like a you gotta have like this mental toughness just to be kind of sitting there. And you know, everybody's like, oh, well, you did it on a sport bike. You know, why didn't you do it on a Harley? And I'm like, well, either you get a. It doesn't matter way. what. It doesn't no. matter what bike people <laughs> what people get so <laughs> wrapped up in a Harley. Uh, you know, I rode Harleys most of my life, but then when I got into Beamers and Ducatis, I was like, those things suck. And, yeah. and, and it is true because once I got onto a GS 1200 and I had ABS brakes and I had traction yeah. control and I had cruise control and electronic yeah. shield, grips. heated yeah, grips, heated, grips. Heated, heated seats, heated, heated seats. seats. Dude, once <laughs> I got it. Oh, it's the greatest thing in the world, dude. Yeah. You you can eat up miles like it's nothing, man. When it's you got like a nothing. when you got a good yeah. bike. One one funny story about Sturgis. So so me and my buddy we were we were um we were outside uh, Bryce Canyon. We went to Bryce Canyon the night before, and we stayed at that hotel that's right at the base that that Comfort Inn. It's like it's like this awesome hotel with huge fucking pools and hot tubs, and uh, so. Uh, we were, we were there. So the morning we wake up in the morning early, like, okay, we're here. We're Bryce Canyon. We're going to go to Mount Zion today. And then we're going to go to, uh, the North Rim. We went to South Rim the day before. So we get up early. It's like six o'clock. We fucking get up, get dressed. We get on the bikes and we, we go fuel up and we're at the, at the gas station. And there's like 50 Harley guys. Cause they're all going to Sturgis cause they yeah. were whatever. Right. So the one thing that's funny to me is they, they, they ignored us. They wouldn't talk to us. It was no, no, not even one like nod. Like, yeah, I know you're on a motorcycle. You're on a sport bike. Whatever. Like I never, like I understood, like I know the culture of it. I know that it started because of the World War II guys who had to fight the Japanese and we they fucking hated them. So, yeah. right. So, so I know, so, but these guys were not those guys. These weren't bikers. These were just fucking weekend dudes yeah. riding to Sturgis to go. Right. So, uh, they all leave before us. So they're, they're in a, in a line of 50 and me and my buddy, Lenny, Lenny's from New Zealand, great sense of humor, fucking awesome dude. And, uh, he goes, he goes, well, look, man, we have a reputation. We might as well fucking keep it. So we fucking pull out, we wait for them to leave and we blew by them at like 140. I looked down, I was going 140 miles an hour. Just, <laughs> Whoa! We <were> just fucking, <laughs> just fucking, and like, ah, yeah, we did what we were here to do. Yeah, so it was fucking, yeah, we lived up to the, uh, yeah, man, it was a, it was an amazing trip, man. I, I spent uh, seven grand. I went through two sets of tires, uh, two chains, uh, a sprocket, um, oil changes and whatnot. Lenny broke down at one point. He had a hole in his spark plug wire, and every time, we got caught in rain. It would get wet and the bike would die. And like, so we went through that. Dude, we, we, um, we went, we went on a glider trip in Boulder. So we like took the day and our bikes were getting worked on. So we went on gliders. We, we surfed in, in, uh, we scuba dove in, in Key West. We, uh, we surfed in California and then, uh, we jumped in this river in Humboldt County and somebody gave Lenny a big old bag of weed. Some fucking hippie guy going down the river in a tube. Hey, man, he just threw us this big bag of fucking air. Wow. Yeah, I got fields of it. And I'm like, all right. So 
Yeah, man, we went to Vancouver, uh, spent the night there, and then fucking took the ferry over, and then uh, came back and um, rode across. And made, oh, dude, the, the Cascade Mountains in Washington, which were fucking gorgeous. I mean, uh, it was one of the most beautiful riding I'd ever done. It was uh, There's a road called uh, Beartooth Pass that links, uh, um, I think, Wyoming and Idaho before you get into to Glacier National Park. That road was so killer that we actually rode it and then turned around and went back so we could ride it again. Like it was like a, it was like a day. We're like, fuck it. Let's just fucking do it. We're, we're here. We're oh. now, and when's the next time we're going to get here? So we rode back and it was just, it was one of those fucking, it was all, dude, I have like 2000 pictures. I took pictures of everything, man. Like Eagles. We saw every fucking animal there is, man. We saw them all. We saw a wolf. We, we didn't see a bear, but we, we saw a wolf. I saw a, I saw a coyote chasing a, a fucking, a road runner. Yeah. actually like fit like saw it happen in front of me it was fucking nuts uh had a bull fucking stare us down oh like, yeah we, we we were leaving um we were leaving uh carlsbad caverns and we were headed to uh, roswell and we took this road called black canyon which runs like off the main road it's like a of this road and there's you know the about when you're in that part of the world there's all these, these pictures of a cow and this is open range so we come around this turn and there's like a hundred cows in the middle of the road and we just stop we're like fuck so we just gotta wait and all of a sudden they parted and there was the bull with his fucking three foot fucking horns and he is pissed and he's snorting and he's breathing he's making that crazy noise i'm like lenny i was like dude i think he thinks our mirrors are horns and we're trying to fuck his cows, man. We might want to leave. So we had to fucking turn around and go back the other way and wait for them to fucking clear out so we can so we can run. It was like, it was like he, you're you're face to face with a Schlitz malt liquor can. <laughs> totally, dude. It was fucking crazy. It was crazy. Crazy things too. We were so we were in Texas, right? We were riding from Austin to uh, Fort Stockton. And it's just straight and flat and boring as fuck, man. I mean, I, you could put on cruise control at one point. I didn't touch my handlebars for like 20 miles. I was just like fucking leaning my butt. So we were going, we were flying down this road and it was a, it was a back road. It was flat and, and we we're going like, uh, we were doing like buck 20, man. We were just flying. And uh, all of a sudden I see this cloud. It looked like a cloud of smoke. And it, we were going so fast that it, it all happened so quick. It was like this, but all of a sudden the cloud just came in front of us and we went through it. We're like, man, we fucking, I'm covered. It was a fucking swarm of bees, man. Oh. We went through a swarm. I had dead oh. bees all over me, man, covered in dead bees. Oh, so yeah. I uh, it, when you're on the road, man, I've I've gone through shit. I was going to Vegas to do a show, and it said sandstorm ahead, and I was yeah. like sandstorm ahead. And I just kept riding, and I came down this hill where you're going into Vegas, and I just saw a brown wall. And I go, what is that? And sure enough, dude, it was a fucking sandstorm. I was going through it. I couldn't even see it. it was like Thule fog. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, I hope I'm not hitting a car in front of me any minute. And got through yeah. that shit. I mean, when you're riding, I, I, I was riding one time to Sturgis, and a ladder fell off a guy's truck, and it was mm. coming down the road this way. And then at the last minute, it spun that way. And we had to fucking, you know, go like go over it. It's like, yeah, you know, without dice. I mean, dude, tires, mattresses, everything, man. Yeah, I had a high, I had a highway cone come off a truck and hit me in the leg. Oh. Like I swerved and it hit me in the side of the thigh and it bruised my thigh. But I had leathers on too. I mean, I, I ride full gear, ninety nine percent of the time. I mean, you know what's in, in Arizona? It's so fucking hot. So I know. I just, you know, it's hard to fucking. Strap um, it on. It's hard to put all that shit on, man. I have, uh, I have, I wear jeans, of course, and gloves and a helmet. Uh, I don't ride without a helmet, um, but I do. Uh, so I work. I really, I work pretty close to my house, and it's. I, so I sometimes I'll I'll just cruise over there, no helmet, and just early in the morning, not in the day. There's right. no freeways. It's just a. It's just back roads, and but I don't know. I get why people don't want to wear helmets. I get it, but it's I just, I love uh, a helmet. I don't give a yeah. fuck, man. Once, yeah, it's, yeah, there's always those guys that are like, you know, uh, you know, what, uh, I love this one. When the I've been riding all my life. I'm 54. So I remember when the helmet law happened, there was these guys who are like, well, I ain't riding anymore. You know, I don't ride with no helmet. And I was yeah. like, you know, those are the same guys 
that uh, wanna, when, don't AIDS, wear seat belts. when AIDS came out, they're like, oh, I wear no rubber. I wear no rubber. You know, it's like the mm-hmm. same thing, but it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love the helmet. I love the helmet yeah. because, uh, you know, dude, I got hit with rocks and, and, and also your hearing, my hearing's fried. My right ear is fried from my, my pipes, the yeah. wind sound and my amplifier on stage. Yeah. So my right ear yeah, doesn't I have, work. I have the same thing. I have, uh, I have left ear issues, but I yeah. wear earplugs when I ride. I put so do I. In. So my, I do. my yeah. bike is so fucking loud. I mean, my RC yeah. was so fucking loud, dude. It was almost yeah. like a V8, you know, yeah. my Yamaha is actually very quiet. And I was like, Oh man, I should put fucking pipes on it. Nope. And, and I was like, you know what? I like that. It's quiet. You know, oh, it's, yeah. it's like a, it's, it's like a BMW. It's a, a, the 1300 is basically, it's like the Hayabusa. It has the same right. motor. It's just a different gearing. You know what I mean? Uh, but it's shaft drive. There's no, uh, yeah. there's no chain to worry about, man. Love it. I had that beautiful. on the GS shaft. Yeah. It's a beautiful oh. bike, man. Oh, like, no, my, no maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. maintenance. <laughs> Dude, all I do is change the oil, man. And fucking that's change it. the gear lube. And that's it, man. That tires. You know, how are, I, I run the fucker. How are you like in Arizona? Oh, uh, it's, you know what, man? I have to, you know, it's like, I lived in LA for three years where it's always nice. You know what yeah. I mean? San Francisco can be sketchy. I actually don't mind the cooler mornings. Um, Arizona is, it's hot as fuck in the summer, dude. It's, it's unbearable. And, um, you know, I, I, I like it here. You know, I moved here for the cars cause I, I was sick of working on rusty nightmare cars back East. So yeah. I moved here for that. I, I, I should have moved to California. Uh, but you know, so expensive. Um, yeah. I mean, Arizona's starting to climb up and, and all that shit. I mean, it's just, you know, you know, now where you move, man, it's, it's the same shit. You run into the same fucking problems, you know, like, you no matter where you are, like in New York was expensive, but you know, um, you know, I just, uh, I do like it here, man. The winter from, from October to fucking May is fucking gorgeous, man. Sit outside fucking every single night, fucking listen to music, smoke a cigar, fucking chill out, do whatever the fuck you want to do. You know, so, you know, I'm fucking, I, you know, I like it here. I, I made some, I made some, a few friends that I really like hanging out with. Um, haven't seen them in a while because of this nonsense, but you know, this craziness going on, but I just been plugging away. I'm, uh, I'm restoring a 76 Corvette for myself. I saw so I that. All, yeah. So I did the rear, the trans, the motor. And now I'm, um, it's off at, uh, it's my buddy is, uh, we're trading work. I'm building a, 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 bu- um, a type three, he painted it and I'm putting it all back together and he's going to sand down all my, uh, my fiberglass and make it fucking nice. And, and then I'm going to slap some paint on it and redo the, I have interior, uh, I bought a whole kit, so I'm just going to redo the interior. I did all the wiring, fixed everything. So it's going to be a fucking tip top car when I'm done. What's Put the engine on that? Just a 350, just oh, a yeah. 350. Um, you know, I was going to, I had, I was going to get like a 327 and the, but you know what, man? I just wanted to drive. It just—it's cool. It's got—I put fifties on it. It's got side pipes. It looks fucking real. Set. I, I took a picture of one, like from like 1972, and I'm like, that's what I want it to look like. So that's what I'm going for. I got big wide fifties on the back. You know, sixties on the front with some old school uh, slot mags. So, yeah, man. Just, I like. A, I, lo- yeah. I love the Chevy Rally rims. There's nothing better than that. You know. I have my. I have the original ones, but you know when you're going for a custom hot rod look, yeah, yeah. Kind of what you, well, you know you're going I mean? for so, coke, coke, cocaine look. You know, you gotta have the <laughs> slot mags. You gotta have that fucking side pipes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking, you know, six by nines in the rear, all trebly and loud. No yeah. base kicker, just fucking nah, nah. Uh, Jen- old school Jensen triaxles, <laughs> dude. Tri-axles. Fuck yeah, we're the fucking. With the uh, the EQ in the glove box, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How did you get into? I'm a giant Porsche guy, and I do love yeah. air cooled Volkswagens, and yeah. I I love uh, the buses that are completely untouchable now, fucking money wise. Yeah. The, yeah, the VW bus is so so great i even i'm loving now the westfalia ones now you know because i'm i'm turning into an old hippie you know? yeah <laughs> how did you get yeah. into that stuff and uh is it because it's just so easy to work on um well it was my first car it was a 66 uh oh, wow. so 
Um, and I had, and I, I, I rebuilt the whole thing. I didn't touch the trench. So I, I, the motor was blown in. So I put a new motor in it and I, I did it with all just with a book, just figuring it out. You know what I mean? I had a buddy who knew a little more than I did. He showed me some shit. And, um, so I, 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 uh, lowered it. I, by, you know, uh, loosening the spring packs and letting it fucking slam down a little bit. And then I, and then I lowered the front by just taking the shocks out and did the, you know, just the old school way of doing shit. Now, now it's so much more different. Then I, I left when I, after that Volkswagen, I had one more, I bought it. I had a Baja that I, I just put big tires on it and uh, cranked the torsion bars all the way up. So it would be uh, higher in the rear. And then um, after that, I, I got into Chevelle. So I had two 69 Chevelles. I had a goat. I had a, I had a GTO, man. I had a Le Mans. I had a, just a bunch of old, I had a nice 72 Firebird that was fucking awesome that um, ended up crashing. Um, just, you know, I would just be always into cars, but the Volkswagen stuff was always cool because it's actually not, it's, it's not easier to work on, but once you know it, it's, it's like, you just know it, you know what well, I mean? It's, so it's all right there you know. in your face, you know? And I always got into like the dual Webers and get it, yeah. you know, some performance out of these little, little engines that were just yeah. nothing, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the, it's, what's cool is like, you can take a, you know, 1600 and, you know, just, uh, put some dual carbs on it or you don't even have to make it just put a, a, you know, even a Weber progressive and you can make it run good. And if you don't beat on it, it'll, if you don't get it hot, it'll run fucking forever. You know what I mean? So once you start getting into the higher motors, which is, so I work at a shop called Doug's Bugs, which is in Mesa, Arizona. And we are a full custom shop, man. We do, I've sent you some pictures, man. We do full frame, you know, pan off restorations. We do complete, we do, if it, if it can be done to a Volkswagen, we do it. We do, uh, right this whole week, um, the last couple of days, I narrowed a beam four inches. So I narrowed a beam and I put drop spindles on it. So it's just, it's going like a, a on a 59. So I set it all up with disc brake kit and new new uh, steering box and all that shit. So, you know, um, I know I'm I'm really the the restoration guy at the shop. So basically, what I do is I tear the car down, um, log everything that needs to be replaced, which is usually pretty much everything except the hardware. Like you can keep the hardware, but um, now they have this awesome stainless steel hardware. So you buy you buy a kit. And it's, you just replace every bolt on the fucking car with stainless steel. It's fucking wow. awesome. It's, so, um, what I do is I change all the rubber, all the glass, obviously all the rubber, all the components you, you, uh, you know, you pull apart like most of these cars, you know, so now we're getting into cars that are not like when I first started working on them, they were, they were 20 years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when I was in high school and, and cause we're the same, about the same age, I'm 52. So I was in high school and I had my first bug. Um, it was only, you know, 20 years old, right? Not even 20. It was like 19 years old. Now the cars are 60 years old and Ugh. fucking dozens of fucking idiots have fucking worked on them. Chewed on doing them. All, can't, doing all just sorts. can opener work. Dude, dude, I've seen that like the good, I've seen just like, like looking at like, what the fuck were you thinking? And you know, what's fucked up is it works. Like, like, how did this fucking drive around like this? Yeah. I don't get it, but you know, people dude, I've seen, yeah, I've seen the craziest shit and you know, um, we work on, we do everything man. we, so we, everything is in house. We do, uh, uh, transmissions, motors, you, you name it. We do, we do off road. I do a lot of off road stuff. I just actually built a, a put a roll cage in a, in a, this, uh, kid. He's, he's got his first Baja and I was like, well, if you're going to, you do it, do it right. You better put a roll cage in if you're going to go beat the shit out of it. And he's like, yeah. So I, I put a roll cage in it for him and, uh, put some uh, new carbs on it for him. Got it running real good and put new brakes and fucking yeah, man. So those yeah. cars are going through the roof in money wise, mm -hmm. you know, like, mm -hmm. like I said, those what 20, those safari buses, those things are over hundred hundred grand. Dude, we had one come in our shop two years ago. It was, he bought it for 285 at Barrett Jackson. It was built by Ken Kendig in California. And then when he bought it at Barrett Jackson, he lived in, he lived like in, uh, Ahwatukee, which is kind of like, uh, east of where I live, east of Chandler. 
And by the time he got to Mesa, it was overheating because they didn't set the carbs up for Arizona heat. So he brought oh. it to our shop. So we have this $285,000 bus on a lift. Everyone was afraid to drive it. No one wanted to work on it. We're like, fuck. Oh. But we had to do a ton of shit to it, man. We ended up, you know, because God forbid you ding or fuck up something on it. I mean, it's just, you know. Oh. But What color but, was yeah. it? It was red and black. It was, uh, and the guy was awesome. And he actually took us the entire shop out to lunch uh, uh, to a brewery. We all went, and he was really, uh, very, very, uh, very cool guy. Wow! Um, right now, I'm restoring a, a '66. I, I sent you pictures of that blue, the red one. one. Oh, oh, the no, blue the, bug, the, the blue the, bug. Yeah, yeah, so that custom. It was a custom paint job. It's a, it's a. She's a. The woman is a uh, an orthodontist, so she she picked the color. It was custom. She's going full out. She's got AC. We installed AC on in it. Fucking uh, 2110 motor, uh, single carb, uh, two barrel. Um, but uh, it runs fucking killer, man. It's got it's. I put the the the. She was the first one I think I did the stainless steel kit in, and we put. Uh, so she got every all the bolts are new stainless steel. Every single bolt on the car, every piece of rubber, every piece of glass. Um, What's weird is you look at a Volkswagen, right? And you're like, oh, it's a simple little car. Now, it was designed in 1937, right? Wow. And the, desi the design didn't change until – they made minor changes, but the, basically the design basically stayed the same for, you know, the, it's in, until 2004 when they stopped it's making like, it. It's like the Porsche 911. Yeah. You know? So the things that they did change are so stupid. Like, uh, so making – there's two things that are really fucked up to work on on a bug. One is the horn, depending on the year, because specific years have different, they're all different. Like 65 is a little chrome ring. And if that little chrome ring touches the fucking thing just yeah. a little bit, it fucks up, right? So you, it, it won't work. So you got to do And then 68 is different, 69, 70, 72 are run all off of the switch now, off the blinker switch. So there's all these little nuances that if you don't know, man, it'll, it'll fucking drive you crazy for oh. so long. Yeah, so. I, uh, I I hear that you're a comedy fan. I did. I was watching some live clips of you, and you were wearing a Stanhope shirt, which is fucking. Yeah. Doug Doug is incredible. He's Do one you, of my favorites. I'm friends with him, Doug. I've I've been down to his house a bunch of times, and I hang out, out with Doug. Biz, I talk to Doug. Yeah, his B, yeah. yeah. I went down. I went down recently. I went down like two months ago and did a, a hot wing contest with me and all his buddies, and uh, yeah. I ate a I ate a Carolina Reaper Reaper fucking pepper. Pe oh no! I ate the the extract. It was even worse than the pepper. I wish I ate the pepper. This shit was, dude. It was fucking. It was brutal, man. Yeah. Oh. So, so I've been doing stand up. I've been doing you, stand up for for like six months now. Oh really? Yeah. Where Bobby Kelly made me do it. Bobby really? Kelly made me do it. I've been to uh, a couple bars in downtown Phoenix that have like open mic nights. I've only done open mic so far. So yeah. I've done that, and uh, yeah, man, just you know, I fucking tell stories, and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and do you write material, or you just tell rock stories? I do both. I've been writing. I, I've been writing jokes, and then testing them out on my friends, and seeing if they work. And then I have them all written down. And then once everything opens up again, uh, I'm hopefully going to go try to do it. I know that uh, Bobby Kelly is supposed to come here. Uh, in August, you know, I'm I'm hoping he drags me up there and I get to go do a few minutes and uh, yeah, yeah. So and I'm fr I'm friends with Jim Norton. I was really good friends with Otto and George. Me and Otto were were really good friends. Um, Mike Di Stefano. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, me and Mike. Me and Mike. Me and Mike rode motorcycles together. So w he would go to New York. We would go down to the city and I would do like five shows with him a night. I'd follow him from club to club. Me, him, and Gerardo. Uh, Whoa. Geraldo. Really? Yeah. So. And they were always telling me, dude, just get up there and do it. And I was always terrified. Dean, I was fucking terrified. I was like, no, 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 I'm fucking. And then, like, like maybe like like eight, nine months ago when I first did it, um, I did a podcast with Bobby Kelly here in Tempe when he was doing the Tempe Improv last year. And then he was like, dude, just do it, man. Just do it. And for six months, I just fucking contemplated it. And then one night I just called. I, I, I went online and I found a, a, an open mic night and I went. And I did five minutes, and uh, and I made everyone laugh, and I, I didn't suck. I did. I went. I didn't walk off mortified. But I'll tell you this: 
I sang in front of 120,000 people multiple yeah. times. Yeah. This was more terrifying than that. This was absolutely, you know, that, you know, like having to piss, you, like, you know what, you know, when you're going on, you got to, you, you like, you got to piss every fucking five minutes. Yeah. And, it just, and nothing comes out. It's like a thimble. It's like, fuck, nothing. And it's just that no, I was so fucking nervous because I'd been on stage, dude, it's nothing. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. uh, you know, totally. but no band, but no band. No it's band to back it up. <laughs> also, yeah. I, I always tell people like, you know, like I did the LA Forum opening for Burr. And I've also sang in front of thousands and thousands of people like you. What they don't understand is the bigger the crowd, the easier. You know, That's it's one of it's, those things. The, the clubs it's like are the twenty yeah. people there that paid and are judging you, and you can see yeah. each face. They're like, <laughs> you know, yeah. the other guy, arms crossed, and yeah. and you know, guy looking at his phone. You can see yeah. everything going on in the room, and you're like, this sucks. Yeah, I did that in Dean Phoenix. There was a bar. There's a bar. I think it's the the Van, uh, Van Buren, and they had an open mic night. And I went, and it was just people eating and drinking. And then the stage was like like six inches. Like they had just grabbed this p- fucking piece of wood and put a microphone on it. And uh, my my opening joke was, I you know I ate dog once by accident. Or, or no, I just said I ate dog once. And somebody, some, the 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 girl that was bartending, um, was like. Ew! I can't yeah. Hear. Yeah. And then I and then I told the joke of, of how I ate dog, and um, yeah. So it was fucking. Yeah, it didn't go well. But uh, actually, it didn't feel well. Right. But people were giggling, and and my manager, she said I was. She goes, "You were fine." Like fuck them. Like they didn't get it. Like whatever. Like you were fine. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a. It's a. It's an interesting animal, and. Um, mm-hmm. I've been doing it now 10 years and I sang for 25 years and yeah. I, I love it way more than doing music. I think just because uh, I love the old school of uh, not having phones. You know, when I'm doing comedy in, in real clubs, there's no phones allowed to talk. On, you know, it's, right. just, yeah, yeah. it's you and the audience and, yeah. and it, there's be, besides plays, that's really the only place where there's no phones anymore. These assholes with the phones in the movie theater yeah. and concerts filming you and all that, 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 yeah. that old school feel of connection playing music with, uh, you know, unless you're in other countries where people are way into it, but that okay. old school feel is gone. And, yeah. and to get that back and to, and the challenge of, uh, something new, too really really makes me feel good at 54 yeah. years old of like oh my god i'm 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 doing something new yeah you know? i'll make it a, i i my my band generation kill we have a new record we're working with uh zeus who does uh he does like hate breed robin zombie he did our other he did our second record and we're working on doing a full record right now so the guys are in new york they did the drums the guitars and then i did the vocals out here with uh, Mike Gilbert from Flotsam and Jetsam. I did his at his studio and um, been flying the files back. And, and it's, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know when it's going to come out. I don't know if we're ever going to tour again. I mean, I, don't, I think comedy and music are going to be the last best since to come back. Because Absolutely. who the fuck wants to take the risk of, I, I would go see a band right now. I mean, unless I was, I, th- I heard Kreischer did uh a, a drive-in and everyone sat in their cars and i was like right. oh, no. i saw people doing gigs where the people honk instead of laughing I, I, I can't stand that car horn i lived in new york for you know three years oh, i can't stand car horns oh man yeah no me, it's just i yeah good let, let me ask you um when you get the exodus gig mm-hmm. and uh i'm i'm a massive paul bailoff massive exodus oh. you know yeah how how did you approach the vocals? Because, like I said, I've sang all my life, and and uh, if I was asked to audition for Exodus, I really don't know how would I approach that because it was really like Bailoff nailed it so hard. Did you look at it as like I want to try to be close to Bailoff? I mean, I've listened to your stuff, and it's not like that, but. How did you come at that vocal style? Did you say I'm just going to do what I'm going to do? No, I, I. So 
like you, I mean, when I when I first saw Exodus in New York when I was fucking sixteen years old, you know, uh, you know, I, I fuck man, I, I, you know, I love that band. Um, and honestly, like Bonded by Blood was was one of those records that was like ingrained in me. You know, it was like a, it was like a, um, it was like Sad Wings of Destiny. It was like moving pictures. I knew every nuance of the whole record, and. One of the things that I that I was told, so I I I, I auditioned, but I auditioned with um, War is My Shepherd, and I auditioned with uh, I think Scar Spangled Banner, and those are the two songs that kind of won them over. Because when I did their audition, I only did like three songs. We didn't do Bonded. We did uh, I think we did I think we did uh, oh, fuck I don't remember, but we um, I took it I so I was I was you know. When, when we sat down before the thing, they, they told me Bailoff didn't know what he was doing. He just kind of winged it. And all those little nuances that you heard were him trying to be Paul Dieno. Now, the first two Iron Maiden albums are by far my favorites. I mean, I love Bruce, but those first two albums were, were – I know them in and out, just like I know all those other albums. that I don't know if you're the kind of guy that I used to sit there and I would get an album – when I would tune out the world, I'd put on headphones and I would fucking read every lyric and I would just look at the artwork and I would just focus on that, man. Like, I still do that today, man. Like, when an album comes out, I listen to it in its entirety from beginning to end because it's a, it's a, it's a ride. And yeah. that's, how I, that's how I make – like, Generation Kill is the same way. When I, when I made that, that album, We're All Gonna Die, I – put it in the order of the songs because I wanted it to be like a roller coaster. I wanted you to go on this little, this for me, you know, mu music is spiritual, dude. Music is, it, music is everything. It touches your soul. It touches your emotions. It touches everything. It's, it's, you know, can you imagine the world without music? And, and it's the one thing that people steal the easiest. And it's still the first thing that, Oh, well, you know, we'll fucking get rid of all the musicians. Well, you know, Fuck, man. I mean, they're the ones that bring joy to you. They're the ones that take you away from your fucking stress and all the shit. So when I when I approached it, I approached it like I'm going to honor Bailoff. Now, I'm not going to shit on Tetro. I just never really I never really liked his his vocals. I, I uh, it's I don't it's kind of like I was never a huge fan of Udo either, even though they're great people. And I know them as personally. I've met Udo a couple times. Uh, and and I, it's not that I didn't didn't I didn't hate Tetro. I just kind of lost interest because it wasn't like every other fucking fan. Oh, it's not the original. Like, fuck it. I was, I was that dick. You know what I mean? So I understood going into this was going to be a total shit show. I'm like, this is going to be an uphill battle. But what I did was, is, uh, you know, someone told me, uh, you know, Peter Tagren from hypocrisy. When I, I, I met him and hung out with him, he goes, dude, just be yourself. Don't, you know, I was I was having at odds with with uh, at the time. Um, uh, someone was telling me, "Oh, you should watch videos of Phil, and you should watch videos of Tom Araya, and you should watch videos of this guy and this singer, and you should like." And I'm like, "Well, then I'd just be a fucking ripoff of them, man. How about how about you just leave me to fuck alone and let me do what the fuck I'm gonna do and let me learn this?" So it you know over ten years, I, I toured for ten years, man show 200 shows a year plus man i mean and i i learned my craft i did my 10,000 hours you know what i mean i did my and i got better at it as i as i went along but i also got more confident that oh i'm not going to i can pay homage to people without stealing them and i can still be myself so when we did uh let there be blood which was a, a re re recording of bonded now it was supposed to be live we were supposed to re record it at the key club live and that was going to be it but it didn't it, for some financially or for whatever reason at the time it didn't work out so they went back home and i was in new york and they said hey we're just going to go record it and then we'll and i did the vocals in new york i didn't even do the with them and uh what i did was i listened to bailoff for fucking two weeks straight and went in and tried to because you know bailoff wasn't really that great of a singer it was he all was awesome. attitude it was all attitude, but he was so honest about it. He was so honest about his his uh, his approach to it. You know, even though he didn't have the, vo I think if he had kept doing it, if he had kept going and got ten years, he would have been phenomenal because he would have found his voice inside himself that he didn't even know he had. He was trying to be Paul Diano. That's all he was trying to do. 
And that comes from the source. That comes from Tom and Gary told me he was trying to be Paul Diano. That's what he was trying to be. And I, and I get it. I love Paul Diano, man. He's one right. of my favorite singers. And I get why. And I hear where he was doing that. So, you know, those little things that he was doing, I mean, uh, you know, I, I you know, he, <laughs> Paul Bailoff sang the same album twice and he's a fucking legend. But you're yeah. always a legend past, you know, when you, when he was doing it, nobody gave a fuck. Right. It, you know, so, and I, I understood that, but I also understood that I had, I had enormous shoes to fill. I had a, a, a group of people, which are, I'm not going to shit on metalheads because they're diehard and they fucking love it. Like just, ah, they fucking love it. But they, they don't listen to jazz. They don't listen to other music. They don't listen to our, you know, other stuff like I do. I'm, I'm, I listen to everything, man. But, I had somebody shit on me for doing like a like a a song that it had like acoustic guitars in it, and I sang a little bit, and then it gets heavy, and they're like, "Oh, the first two minutes suck, but the second half's great." I'm like, dude, did you not listen to "Sad Wings of Destiny" where he, he sang to a fucking piano? Did you not listen to to "Prodigal Son" on on fucking Killers? Like, come on, man. Yeah. You know what? I, you know, I give those type of people zero seconds. Zero. <laughs> Zero. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. I'm I telling you, that. they yeah. don't even exist in my fucking world because yeah. these are the same people over and over and over and over. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Metallica once Cliff Burton was gone. Yeah. Fuck uh, ACDC when Bon yeah. Scott was gone. Fuck ba 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 ba. Fuck ba 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 ba. That's all yeah. they fucking do. And I yeah. always say, promote what's great, not what you hate. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's just, it's unreal. So I give them no, no seconds. And I yeah. feel so good about it, you know, because yeah. shit, I had on, um, I was trying to think. I had somebody on, oh, I know. It was Jakey Lee. Mm -hmm. I had Jakey Lee on and I said, hey, Jake, man, it was amazing how you got into that Randy Rhodes uh, position and you made it your own and Ozzy carried on and was huge. And he goes, yeah, but what you didn't see every night were the signs in the front row and the spitting and the and the middle fingers yeah. of fuck you. Where's Randy? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. Randy is dead. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't kill him. I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's gone. Yeah. I, I, yeah. They didn't fire him. He is gone. Yeah. And uh, it's it's uh, that kind of world. And, and we really see it now uh, more than ever in the political atmosphere and the mask battles and all this shit. It's everybody is fuck everyone. It's about me. Yeah. And that's all I, they care about, you know? I, you know what? And one of those things, man, I, I was never like that. You know I mean? I, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you don't, uh, I don't find the, I don't feel the need to go shit on anybody's art or anybody. You know yeah. I mean? I, look, I like what I like and I don't like what I don't like. And there's a right. certain thing, but I don't go on fucking, I don't go on just, you know, off YouTube, any, put I don't, a comment any, up. Right. any, any, any country music guy. Like I don't, I'm not really a fan of pop country. Right. I don't go on their sites and shit on their fucking, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I just don't, you know, yeah. I just I but, don't listen to it. Yeah. But I get people's passion. I get metal heads the way they are, man. I understand. It's just like punk rock guys are the same fucking way. You know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a New York punk at heart, man. I, I think, but one of those things I, you know, is, is, is I homage Paul and I even homage Zet because Zet did some really great things, man. I just, uh, you know, um, I, I, I just wanted to be myself right. and that, that comes with a price. And the price was, you know, I'll tell you this, man, of all the shit that I got on, on, it was always keyboard warriors. It was never, I've never had one person get in my face and say, dude, I fucking hate your vocals. I hate your voice. Nobody's right. ever come up to me and said that. Right. Not one fucking person right. in 10 years of touring. It was always somebody on a fucking message board or a fucking website who was never, I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not a badass. I don't claim to be, you know what I mean? Um, right. But nobody, nobody's ever done that uh, for, for whatever reason. Well, but also people, people also think because of how you are on stage is who you are as a person. And that's just not the, that's just not the way it is. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, uh, it's a part of myself, but I'm a, it's almost like a character, man. It's like, you're, look, I'm singing about Satan. I'm not yeah. doing it with a fucking smile on my face, man. It's yeah. not, you know, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I'm, 
the music's angry and aggressive and it's about the darkest parts of life, man, and then of the human existence. And I'm not going to be, I don't feel like smiling when I'm doing it. But in between the songs, I tell a joke and fucking smile and talk with people and laugh. And, yeah. and I hung out. I, was, I never forgot what it was like to be a crew guy, man. I mean, I always, I had a habit of thanking the crew on a nightly basis. I never forgot what it was like to carry amps. There was a time when I was going through some shit in my head in Europe. And I just said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load out and load in. I'm going to help the crew. And I just did it for myself because I needed to just not be my, in my own head, man. You know, I've, I've been sober for 27 years and yeah. touring for 10 years sober had moments where I was just, you know, not that I wanted to drink. I just didn't want to be in my own skin. And uh, so I would find ways to get out of it. And one of those ways was, uh, you know, at one point I loaded gear. Another point I started running. Another point I started just lifting weights and just, uh, you know, I, I had a, I quit smoking cigarettes and then I gained weight, I lost weight, I gained weight, I lost weight. It's been like this fucking battle for fucking you know, 15 years and I, I, uh, I suffer from depression and I go through, you know, shit where I just, uh, it just overwhelms me. And I, but <clears throat> working through it has been, uh, the last couple of years has been, has been cool. I, I've had to be able to, you know, uh, working on cars used to be my, uh, my solace. Like I used to, you know, I've always built cars. I've always had, had hot rods and doing that used to be my therapy. You know what I mean? Where I would just tune into what I was doing and there's nothing like cleaning off the kitchen table and rebuilding the carburetor, man. It's just fucking yeah. just parts of the, uh, so, you know, that, that kind of stuff, but I don't, uh, you know, there are times when I just, I got overwhelmed on tour, man. And I just be, you know, the partying and the, the fucking drugs and the drinking and just the constant, you know, having to be and then you know, you know, it, it, know. it wears on you. Yeah. yeah it wears on you. Well, so. also when you're not doing that stuff, like I, I, I could give a sh- I don't give a fuck about partying, but uh, I don't really hang out around partying. So when yeah. you're around it, it's like, uh, I mean, I saw a guy at the 7-Eleven last week. This is a God honest truth. I was inside the 7-Eleven getting a, a water, and I felt this fucking weird force behind my shoulder. I swear to God, I felt this. I go, oh, what is that? I look, and behind me, outside in front of the 7-Eleven through the window, was this guy tweaking so hard <laughs> at like two in the afternoon. He's off. He's just, <laughs> his jaw's gone, and he's out there. I fucking felt that negative energy. It tapped me on the shoulder and was <laughs> like, hey, remember <laughs> that? And I looked, yeah. and was like, ah! <laughs> And I couldn't believe I felt that energy. And I was like, wow, man, that is some, yeah. that is some gnarly shit, man. You know? And, so, and imagine, and, and every show, you know the deal after shows, shaking hands and meeting uh, weirdos and meeting, uh, the, you know, the guy who's got like a, he's got bear like, huggers. Uh, yeah, the, and they're all sweaty and gross. Spitting in your face. <laughs> Co- COVID, and, and look, COVID you transfers. Nice. Oh, you gotta right, be nice. Yeah. You got to be nice. You got to do, you know, and look, man, I, I've never been the guy, that fan. Like, you know, I've met, I've met, I think 99 of my heroes. Like I've yeah. met them all. I've, I've fucking hung out with my heroes, man. Yeah. And, and, and I never once would I like, I never would, would be that way with people. And that's why I understood Neil Pert. When Neil Pert says, I'm not meeting anybody. Yeah. I get it. But so much that, and I was so grateful for the for the opportunity because look man i i got an opportunity that was yeah. once in a lifetime right so i was grateful for it every day so i was i shook every hand i signed whatever the fuck you want there were I'm very the same with, i'm the same with comedy uh, yeah. dude yeah you know? yeah man I, I, I by mean, the way i love your comedy dude I, i've uh, watched a bunch of a bunch of youtube i've watched it and i i've been a fan i watched dude when you did the fucking acdc show dude i oh, wanted yeah. to go to that so bad uh, but I watched, I watched a Bill, I fucking love Bill Burr, and I, I watched, he was awesome, dude. He was fucking, he played, the, I was like, dude, all right, he played the yeah. Cubs killer. Yeah, yeah, man, so, yeah. I'm actually doing a cover of Ride On right now with Jack from Exodus, Snake from, uh, uh, I forget what band he's in, Snake from, uh, a bunch of San Francisco guys, Mark Hernandez, uh-huh. and a bunch of other guys. We're doing Ride On. I'm going to do the vocals later today, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I did them last night, but they didn't, they didn't come out right, so I'm going to do them again today. So it's, it's something about like, uh, you know, I said that I do the ACDC show mostly 
because to give back to Marin and Burr and uh, these comedians that took me under their wing, I right. know that if they can play with their music heroes on stage doing yeah. ACDC, it's the only thing I can give to them that measures to me opening for like Burr at the LA Forum, man, you know? Yeah. Like, right. what are you fucking kidding? They're like, dude, I can't believe it. It was so great. I go, well, now you know how I feel when I fucking step on stage at like, you know, Davies Symphony Hall in San Francisco, you know, in my hometown in a room I've never even been in, you know? Yeah. So to do those shows, man, and, and that was the last show we did, March 10th. Yeah. Uh, you know, yep. the, the next day the city went on lockdown. So yeah, yeah, I, I remember I was wanted to go, man, but I I got sick March sixth, and I was in quarantine for fourteen days. Oh, I, did you I, have I, COVID? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I got oh. I ended up getting sick. So that was and it was very early on, and my birthday was eighth, and I'm like, for my birthday, I want to go to that show. I'm gonna go to that fucking detail Red show with fucking burr and, and all these other fucking awesome people and i couldn't make it because i got sick that was my my plan was to get a, get in my car and drive to la um but it's funny that anyway. you got you got COVID at the same time the exodus guys did and you weren't even in the yeah. bed <laughs> it was like some residual yeah. check you got yeah. <laughs> well i went i went and played with them i went and played with them like two years ago and uh or was it 18 months, two years or 18 months ago? I, I just saw the thing on Facebook recently. Yeah. But uh, it was great, man. I would do a fucking bunch of songs. We hung out, man. Everybody bro hugged and it was all good. And, you know, it was business is business, man. You know, this this thing is, uh, you know, it's like that Hunter Thompson. You know, this this thing is full of thieves and liars. And yeah. and, uh, and, that's the, and that's the upside. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, yeah. business is business. And I get it, man. Whatever. Yeah. And, yeah, man. You know, I mean. I, I mean, I think you knew that wasn't going to end well uh, at the end of the day after years. You know what I'm saying? If you get into something, how long is it going to last? You know, uh, when, when you're in a music thing, you know? Yeah. Just actually, keep... honestly, d d honestly, I, I didn't see it coming. Oh, I wow. Didn't. Wow. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dude. Yeah. I didn't see it coming. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. at least, you know what I always say? At least you got the opportunity. That is. That's the that's the grateful side of that I that I hold on to is that, dude. I've been to 108 countries. I've sang yeah. all over the world. I've fucking made. When you Google mosh pit, I come up. Yeah. That's what happens. I got to do that. I, I fucking I made one of the greatest fucking walls of death of all time yeah. happen in in Vakin, man. I, I sent you that video. Yeah. Dude, it's fucking crazy, man. I mean, I got to do things that that when I'm when when I'm laying on my deathbed. Those are the memories that are going to come up. Yeah. Those, those, the motorcycle trips, man, the yeah. fucking, those, those memories, those things that we make in this life, the things that we create, the things that we've done. And, and we're going to look back on them and they're going to come back when you're, when you're speaking your life, unless you, you know, get hit by a fucking train and it goes like that. And you're like, ah, fuck, yeah. missed yeah. that. I can think about that. Ah, but hopefully I die an old man and, uh, laying on my bed with my, with, uh, you know, and get to talk about it and, and rem reminisce on those things. And, or maybe I'll go out quick. Maybe a big meteor will come, yeah. and I'll be ground zero. That would be pretty good. Well, or least aliens didn't, come. At least you yeah. didn't die from COVID, you know? No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Did I mean, you have I'm it? Real sick. Did you have it bad? I got sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. I had. I coughed so hard. I coughed so much that I was coughing up blood because my like little like spots of blood because I was just caught. My throat was so raw uh. and fucked up from this dry hacky shitty cough and then after i went to the hospital and then i they put me on a um a ventilator um for 12 for like i think like four hours but i was oh. there for like 12 but but i i had to breathe in um uh this some kind of drug and it it, it opened up my lungs and then i started hacking up uh brown and green shit and then right. once i started doing that i felt much better once i started hacking up shit Right. And, uh, my the guy I work with got it, man. The guy, one of the guys I work with, he's been out for almost three weeks now. He's been so. And my shop is small, man. There's only five of us. You wow. Know, every, every, everybody has their own deal. So you know, um, doing lots of lots of restorations this year, um, like four. Wow. Off road stuff. So. Well, fuck, man. I'm glad I got to talk to you. 
Me too, man. Me too. And uh, and and I'm glad that you and Gary are are friends again. You know, because I I no. know I know how bands, you know, uh, shit when it's hot, it's hot. But later on, it was when, bad. It was bad for a year, man. Yeah. I went on I went on Opie and Anthony. I I was like, and, and Norton's like. So uh, what happened with X? I'm like, ah, fuck those douchebags. And I fucking yeah. went on this fucking tirade because I was fucking angry for like yeah. a year yeah. and resentful and just, just, and I, and, and I was trying to keep my cool for so long. I wrote like a, a, a thoughtful statement. I was grateful. And then that dissipated into like this, this, you know, just angry, resentful shit bag that I had become. And then I, uh, I sat down with a, with a couple buddies, man. And I just kind of like talked through it and, uh, and then it got, and then I felt better. And then, um, and then Gary called me and, uh, and we spoke for a couple hours and, and it all, and then I, and then I, I flew to San Francisco and I sat down with, uh, with, uh, the four guys, Tom Lee and Gary and the four of us sat there. Zet didn't come, but the four of us sat at a hotel. We sat, we had dinner and we just spoke, man. And, and it was all, it was it was it was all good when I got up from the table. Everybody bro hugged, and then fucking that was it. And then I went and and uh, and I went home, and I felt great when I when I left. And you know, I talked to him on a regular basis, man. I talked to Lee fucking all the time. We talked hockey and fucking, you know. And me yeah. and Gary talked. Gary played. Uh, he actually played on the new Generation Kill record. So did Rick Hunel. I got Rick Hunel and Gary Holt on uh, on my new album. Wow. So wow. yeah, that's great. So I'm, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you a track, but you yeah. can't share it with anybody because it didn't yeah. come out yet. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll email it to you when we, uh, when we hang up, man. Yeah. So, so. Sounds good. And then hopefully, um, I'll be doing comedy in Arizona. You can come down and do five minutes on my show. <laughs> Fucking a, dude. I would love that. Yeah, and, man. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. I don't know when that's going to be. In the meantime, I just concentrate on the podcast and keep my brain positive. You know. Yeah, man. So I actually, so I, uh, my manager got me uh, a, a bunch of sure stuff like microphones and I'm going to actually start a podcast, but I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to talk about, uh, the things that I love, man, which is, uh, we're, I'm going to have car guys on, I'm going to yeah. have tattoo guys on. Well, that's what know, I do. I'm, I don't I'm have just, don't, music. I, I don't just yeah, have yeah. music. I got guys on, yeah. You know, I'm about to have Nico Hurtado on, who's one of the best mm. tattooers on the planet. Nico's he did, awesome. He did oh the Bon Scott on me. I have yeah. people on that build cars, motorcycles, uh, make boots. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. dudes that make uh, eyewear, everything, man. It's just, yeah. it, to me, it's just a passion podcast is what I have, you know. That's what I'm going to do. I, they talked me into it. So I'm going to do, uh, I got Bob Tyrell. That's who's doing mine. Uh, yeah. he tattooed, he did a big piece of my stomach. He's done a lot on my leg. Um, and Bob and, and Nico work together all the time. They've done a couple of fucking, uh, pieces together, which are fucking awesome. Nico's the shit. Tell him I said, tell him I'm a huge fan, man. All right. You got it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm almost done with my bodysuit. I almost got a full bodysuit. Wow. Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. man. I'm my about back to is almost done. I'm about to get a new one from Nico. I'm not telling anybody what it is, and I'll debut wow. it here pretty soon. Well, yeah. Well, it'll be me. I'll send you a picture. Just get ah. that right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, favorite yeah. song on Bonded by Blood before we get out of here? Uh, fucking No Love. No oh. Love is, it's, got that, it's got that fucking... It's got that... Uh, well, the, the opening is awesome, but it's got that groove that just... It's got that thing, man. Yeah. And Paul, Paul just killed it. You want to know a really weird fact about No Love? Yeah. All right. So there's a section on No Love in the in the middle part, right, where he uh, he couldn't get it. He could not get the timing. They uh -huh. were in the studio. Gary said to me, he tried it maybe fifty fucking times. Could not get it. Right. It's one little one little line. It's not even that weird. It's just a, the timing is a little weird, and Paul's timing was terrible. So the fucking engineer, go. He got so mad. He's like, "Fuck it, I'll do it, man. Fuck." And this guy, I don't forget his name, walked in and sang it, and that's on the fucking record. It's not even Paul. <laughs> that's great. It it's fucking one line, and, and dude, yeah. And Exodus is weird. Exodus is one of those weird bands too that have really weird timing stuff and there's issues like uh, like some of the songs are harder to sing than others because they were different than everyone else that's yeah you know what i mean they really were they had the and, and no love 
is one of those songs that has all the aspects. It has the fast part, the slow, the groove, the day, that time. And Tom Hunting, one of the greatest drummers of all time. Yeah. So hard to cop. You talk to, you know what, this, I sent, you got to tell Burr to listen to some Tom Hunting. Okay. I sent Burr. Oh, on I, Twitter, gave, a fucking- I gave Burr uh, Bonded by Blood when we were on tour. And right. I said, I like, said this, this is the record, dude. And he put this it on. Is the one you got. Yeah, while we were driving in, across country, he was like, oh, this is some fucking heavy shit, man. Fuck, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. To He's me, always trying to learn Bottom. I was like, dude, uh, if you can learn a Tom Hunting song, man, yeah. fuck, you, Bottom won't even. All right, yeah, great. Uh, so. For me, it's And Then There Were None. I love And Then There Were None. Yeah. yeah the fucking anthem Anthony, yeah. I mean, Bonded is great. There's there's not a bad song on the record. Exodus yeah. is a great song. Yeah. I, I yeah. mean, there's not a, it's one of those perfect records, man. Even, yeah. you know, people are like, oh, Metal Command is kind of weak. Yeah, go fuck yourself. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. 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 yeah fuck it's you. Just like, yeah. It's just like Hetfield says he hates Escape on, uh, on, uh, oh, so. Ride the Lightning. I'm like, love that song. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I hope to see dude. you soon. And yeah, uh, man. stay in touch. And I will. When that uh, Generation Kills comes out, I'll I'll pump it out here for you. Fuck it, man. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna send you the the first single that's coming out. Just uh, you know, don't share it, but you no, know, no. deal. Yeah. So I'll send and uh and uh yeah. So, but dude, this has been a pleasure, man. You're awesome. I'm a huge fan. And uh, yeah, man. All right, buddy. Candles lit. Oh, hey, do you use CBD? Uh, using CBD. Yeah, I do, and I have uh, um, I do it. Uh, I have the rub. I have the that. I use a tincture in the morning before work. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, why? C- oh, I'm a big CBD guy. And it's C- uh, my show is sponsored by CBD Lion. I was just like wondering oh. if you were in. I, I'm so into it, you know, for like riders. Yeah. You know, like my wrist, dude. It's oh, so that little that little spot on your shoulder, right, right that, here, dude. Oh, that little spot that fucking oh, oh. my god, oh. it's brutal. Yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> CB, CBDLion.com. <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right, bud. Be I good, love man. you, man. Thanks. I'll see ya. Peace. Later. Peace.